Hello! It's lovely to be back and see you again, even though I don't know who you are or where you are. But anyway, my name's Mike, and if you were with me last week, um, we're talking about stories and poems, really, and using words to sort of paint a picture. So you start with a blank sheet of paper. Now, if you're an artist, of course, you draw something fantastic. If you're a musician, you'd... you'd write a score for music, fantastic, and you'd express something with that music or that art. With words, well, you've got to be good. you've got to work quite hard to get some of your words. Some people are scared of a blank sheet of paper like this, but not me. I love it because anything can happen. Any story, any poem can happen on a blank sheet of paper. Now, how do you go about writing stories or poems? Well, last week, if you remember, we walked up to a wood um, we actually found the missing link, if you remember, and an old tree and a tree stump where a tree had toppled down somehow. Today we're going to go to a different wood. Now this one, it's prehistoric. It's like you imagine dinosaurs roaming there. You also imagine you might find Stigger the Dump. You know that story, Stigger the Dump, Clive King. Well, you imagine you might find something deep that's been buried for many, many years. So our story will be in those woods and um, it'll be a different wood. But let's talk about stories and poems again, because at the end, when I come back here, if I get back here, maybe today's story will end with me, with a wolf or a bear or a witch again, I don't know. Anyway, we, let's talk about stories. What's the difference between a story and a poem? Well, poems, fewer words, not so many words, and poems have to have a rhythm. They don't always have to rhyme, but they have to have a rhythm. A bit like lyrics for a song, they have to have a rhythm. Whereas stories, if you're writing stories, they can go longer. You can take two pages describing a chair if you want to. In a poem, you've got to be much sharper with your language. Cut things away. Now, stories and poems. Where do you get your ideas from? I mean, we're going to get ideas from Peter and the Wolf, aren't we? Now, Peter and the Wolf is a really interesting one to talk about a story because... Lots of good stories come when you get things that are opposite each other. So, for example, if you get the police and you get criminals, right, goodies, baddies, you get opposites, OK? And in Peter and the Wolf, you've got opposites because you've got the bird and the wolf. You've got the cat and the, or you've got the, the wolf and the duck. You've got the cat and the bird. And you've got Peter and his grandfather, and you've got the hunters as well. And very interesting, because Peter's grandfather knows to be careful of wolves, whereas Peter, who's young and thinks he knows about things, says, ha, I'm not someone who's scared of wolves, when in fact, he does need to be scared of wolves. I'm scared of wolves, aren't you? Of course you are, yeah. And if I meet one today, I will be petrified and I will run for my life. In fact, I'm taking a whistle just in case anything happens so I can blow the whistle and hopefully someone will come and find me. So stories have to have opposites and you have to get a good idea. Now, what I want us to write about today is I want us to write about fear and courage. And I might, if we, if we get time, I might read you a little story about... Because men and women, men always think they've got to be really tough, don't they? Well, not, you know, things have changed now, but... You know, when I grew up, things uh, men had to be tough and women not so tough, but is now very different. So I might read a story about that, That, um, but we'll see. Right, I'm going to go to the wood and then we're going to get some ideas for a story or a poem. I'm looking forward to it already. Come on, let's go. Well, it's a long way to the prehistoric wood and the rocks that were made before the dawn of time. Here, I don't know whether you can see them, but there's lots of cows. Will there be wolves or bears? Who knows? But it's a long walk. You see, following that track up there to find the wood for you, for the beginning of our story. Or will it be the end? Who knows? And so it begins. The long climb up to the prehistoric wood. What awaits us? What will we see? I've heard there are beasts that lurk there that people have never seen before or since. I can hear the river, but I won't be able to hear much else soon. I'll be deep in the prehistoric wood. I'll see you in there. Well, here I am in the lost world. 
Have a look at this. Rocks on the other side. Look at it. This thing's biting me. Snakes, all sorts around here. Whew. Look at that. Look at that over there. Ow! Somebody bite me again. Sorry. This is the world that time forgot down here. And I have heard some strange sounds. Can you hear that? Sounds like a pterodactyl. It wouldn't surprise me, it's so overgrown here and so, so completely odd. And some of the flies up here, I've seen flies you wouldn't imagine seeing. Oh dear, this is amazing. Now, for a story, there's lots of ingredients here. There's all sorts, see that little passage through there? Look, little passage through the, through the rocks, see it there? Little ledge. I'll see if I can get over there after. But there's things creeping all up my leg. It just wouldn't surprise, you know, you've seen, you know, things like Jurassic Park, which I've seen a couple of them. And uh, you just think anything could be something else again. On oh, my leg. And there's some odd noises and the flies and dragonflies up here. Things like I've never seen before. They're buzzing all around me. And the noises. <sighs> the story. Is this my last chapter? Who knows? But I don't know whether we'll see any of the beasts that they say lurk in these caves down there. It's a long way to the bottom there. Yeah, stories. Let's get my bag. I'll stop a minute. Swarms of flies. Something's died around here, I think. Look at these rocks. And you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to fall down there, would you? See that? And the noises, I keep hearing this. Just this squawking sound. I haven't seen anything, but I hear this squawking sound. I don't know what it is. There's definitely a story or a poem up here. Now, in fact, we could write something that's called something about fear, something about courage. I'll show a story I did, actually. Let me show you this. Hang on a minute. You see, this is a story I wrote called um, A Journey into the Friendly Forest. Obviously, it's for younger children than, than you. But it's still quite a nice story. I quite like it. It's got pictures by the wonderful Hugh Aaron. And um, it's all about a boy, right? Uh, let's turn it that way. Sorry, I know that's going to mess it up for you, right? See, Jack lived with his mum and little brother, but he found school hard. One big boy and his friends always picked on him, and they laughed as they made fun of little Jack. Now his friend, his friend said, Sophie said, you need to man up. What do you mean? asked Jack. Well, hit them back and they won't do it again. Hit them back, said Jack, but they're twice the size of me. Is that the answer? Jack couldn't stop thinking about being a man. It was the weekend, so the next day he decided to go for a long walk. But he hadn't gone far when he met a tiny little fellow with a long beard and colourful clothes. Aha! said the little man. It's Jack, isn't it? Yes, said Jack. How do you know my name? Oh, said the man, I know lots of things. You want some answers to your troubles, don't you? I suggest you walk through the friendly forest. After all, it is there to help. Well, I, I've never heard of that, said Jack. Well, where is it? Oh, straight ahead. Where else would it be? said the funny little man. So like me, Jack went into the forest. As he entered, he spotted a clearing, as like a clearing I'm in now, and in the middle of it was a man in boxer shorts punching a punch bag. Excuse me, said Jack, what are you doing in this forest? I'm a boxer, said the man. I used to get bullied, so I've been training, and I'm waiting to fight someone. Do you want to fight? Oh, no thanks, said Jack. I'm not very good at fighting. Is that the best way to sort things out? Well, it works for me, said the boxer. May the best man win and all that. It's all about winning and losing because... 
Nobody wants to be a loser. Well, th thanks for the advice, said Jack. Is that the best way to sort things out? Now, he hadn't gone much further. He hadn't gone much further when he saw a man in tights dancing. Excuse me, said Jack. I'm trying to find my way. Why are you dancing in the woods? Well, I'm a ballet dancer, said the man. I have to practice every day. You must have heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. Yeah, your dancing is beautiful, said Jack. Well, thanks very much, said the man. It's not easy, you know. Some people make fun of me because I dance, but I ignore them and I find my answers through the music and the way I move. Well, it's lovely to talk to you, said Jack. Keep dancing. And the man did. Jack carried on and he found a man building a den. Excuse me, said Jack. Do you live here? Yeah, I do. I've got nowhere else to go. I'm homeless. Well, that must be hard, said Jack. I've had a tough life, said the man. My parents didn't want me. I got angry and started fighting everyone and I ended up in prison. So now I'm keeping out of people's way. There's nowhere else for me to go. Well, I wish I could help, said Jack. The man smiled. It's not your fault. You just make sure you grab life's chances with both hands, young man. Jack left, feeling a little bit sad. He saw another man weighed down with bags of shopping. Excuse me, said Jack. Where are you going with all that shopping? Me, said the man. Oh, I look after the old lady who lives in the woods. Well, are you a good man then, asked Jack. Oh, I don't know that, said the man. All I know is I want to do the right thing. And that's looking after the lady who struggles to look after herself. Isn't it? Well, thank you, said Jack. Yeah, yeah I think it is. Jack noticed the little old man was waiting for him. Ah! Ha, ha! How was your search? Did you find any answers? Well, I think so, said little Jack. Everyone was so interesting. The boxer trains hard, but I'm not sure if it's all about winners and losers and all that fighting. The dancer sticks up for himself too, but he does it in a different way. He does it through his music and his dancing. And the homeless man, well, he never had a chance and... That makes me sad. Then there was a very nice man sticking up for the old woman by caring for her. So, said the old man, whose advice will you take? Who will you look up to now? You, said Jack, smiling. You've helped me. Do you know what? I want to be as strong, as wise and as thoughtful as you are. And you're small like me too. The old man smiled. Next day at school, the big boy came up and demanded Jack's apple. Now Jack wondered what that little man in the funny clothes, what he would do as he looked up at the big, huge, angry boy. And then he said, It's not yours, said Jack. You take it if you want, but you know what? That just makes you a bully and a small man in my eyes and most people's eyes. The bully and his gang looked amazed. And Jack walked away, still holding his apple. After that, he enjoyed school a lot more and knew what he wanted to do when he grew up. I hope you enjoyed that story. I'm trying to find a way out now again, because I'm lost again. And uh, it's just all bushes and brambles. I, I don't know where I'm going, but I've got to get out of here. And... Uh, I don't know what makes someone really, what gives someone courage. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Fear and courage. The two are opposites, aren't they? Well, anyway, I'll see what I can find. I can still hear that noise, that squeaky noise. Can you hear it? It's like a squeaky. There's a swarm of flies, but there's also a very squeaky noise. It might be that lost dinosaur, that lost being. What do you think? got my ears open now I need to keep my eyes open last time I spotted the missing link this time I can't quite see what it is but I can hear it it keeps squawking I still can't find it I can still hear it's a long way down there I have to be a bit careful by this edge but look at that beautiful
find a way out. I can still hear that squawking. Can you hear it? And the flies. There's something squeaking at me. Did you hear that? That is definitely something, isn't it? What is it? I think I'm where the noise is coming from. I've gone closer. <laughs> hear that? I'm close. But what is it? It's getting closer. Can you see anything? Pink flamingo. What are you doing here? No, I can't speak flamingo. I presume you live here. Yeah, I know. I can't take you home with me. No, I'm busy doing something for a... Yeah, I'd love to. You're beautiful. You're a very beautiful bird. Yeah, you do go with my T-shirt. But I can't take you home. Yeah, you can coach me. What about social distancing? I can't take him home, can I? Well, I'm back from the prehistoric wood. Whew, what an adventure. And I have to tell you, I did have to bring Flamingo, that pink Flamingo, that I'd never seen one before. I had to bring him back for me. In fact, he's downstairs now, having a cup of tea and some cheese on toast with the monkey. In fact, they're probably squabbling over things right now. As a... Can you hear them? Can you be quiet down there? Oh dear. Now I've got a monkey and a flamingo in my house. Well, there we are. But what have we learnt about stories and poems? Well, getting an idea is really interesting, isn't it? Peter and the Wolf is a great idea, lovely story. And you've got those opposites of, you've got the wisdom of Grandfather and the youth of Peter who thinks he can take on a, a wolf when Grandfather knows, watch out for that wolf. You've got the duck who, you know, is the wolf is, is the opposite to the, to the duck. And you've got the cat with the bird, the cat and the bird. You've got those opposites who are going to, you know, you've got them that tension between them. That's what you need in a story. Whereas a poem, as we talked about earlier, a poem has to be sort of cut and trim and has to have a bit of rhythm and it's sort of like, not like a song, a bit like a song, you know. So what I want you to do now, now that we're back and we read the story about the uh, friendly forest, I want you to think about courage and fear. And in these times of coronavirus, you know, there's been a lot of talk about heroes and stuff, but I want you to think about courage and fear. I want you to write a piece that's called, Who Am I? Am I like Peter, who's not scared of wolves? Or am I someone who's scared of spiders? Am I someone who's got his whole life or her life ahead, who's excited and looking forward to it? Or am I someone who might shrink from the chat? You know, whatever. But the piece I want you to write is called, Who Am I? OK, and think about courage and fear and the things we've talked about. Get interesting words to describe whatever, whether it's a poem or whatever it is you write. Interesting words to describe and then ideas. Come out, come up with ideas that no one else who sends things in to me, no one else will come up with. Do you see what that's the ideas? They're really good ideas. Finding angles. Half the thing about writing or painting or dancing or whatever is finding an angle, finding a way in that nobody's ever found before. That's the trick of doing some really good art, isn't it? So find a way in. Think about who am I? And you can keep repeating that if you want to through your piece. And then let's have some interesting piece, but go in an unusual direction. Because if you if you just went... Who am I? Oh, I'm somebody who goes to school and somebody who's been locked in. No, 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 go. Get, let's get interesting. Let's think out the box. I can't wait to see your pieces. I hope you send some in. 
because I'll be looking forward to reading them. And it's been absolutely lovely to see you. And um, keep reading and keep writing. Or whatever you like doing, and I'm presuming that you like writing, that's why you came on this course. Keep writing and keep reading, because it's lovely to have ideas like that. And get yourself out there, in the woods or wherever it is, to keep yourself inspired. Lovely to see you. See you again. Bye-bye.